All right. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, Dave, Jordan. Uh, have you guys noticed that Applebee's is like the best restaurant in movies? Like it keeps popping up, but it, in reality, it's like the worst restaurant in real life. Yeah. But uh, it's, yeah. A, it's like appeared in like uh, Talladega Nights. It's a joke in Couples Retreat. Yeah. Um, it's in a movie called Hall Pass. So you've seen a lot of comedies, but then I was like, okay, to, to make my argument stick, I got to see if it's in not like just comedy. So there's like a pretty serious drama with Billy Bob Thornton called Goliath. They go to Applebee's. They, when the when the survivors were starving on the island, their reward for surviving was a gift card to Applebee's. So it happens in reality TV as well. So I'm just like, how does this happen? Like, this is like an anomaly. And I'm like, let me figure out what Applebee's is all about. So then I look it up and I'm like, oh, there's like a whole treasure trove of information here. It was like, at one point, going to be called Apple Buys or Cinnamons or Peppers. When it actually opened, it was called TJ Applebee's RX for Edibles and Elixirs. Hmm. I was like, wait a minute. So instead of just half price wings and margaritas, you could get like magic potions? Like, what kind of, what kind of, like an apothecary? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you it's can... like a pharmacy where you can get chicken wings. You like, could probably called? bring that back and it would be like a great success in 2023. Oh, because it's like a Hogwarts esque. It's like, come here, get your magic and your hot wings. Yeah. Um, but I, I could imagine receiving like an angry letter from TJ Appleby himself, like, dear Johnny Spoiler, my grandson told me what a podcast was. <laughs> he said, hey, granddad, you might like this podcast. They talk about movies. David seems nice. Jordan seems nice. But Johnny, <laughs> you're a son of a bitch. You broke my heart when you talked about Applebee's being the worst restaurant in America. I've taken your gift card that I set aside for you, and I've torn it into several pieces. I can I imagine know if I back. <laughs> TJ Applebee. It's not my intention to break hearts on this show. I don't know if it's the worst, but it's definitely the most mediocre restaurant. I, I don't understand why anybody enjoys it. And like my wife has family. Like anytime we all get together, like, hey, where do we want to go eat? All the boomers say Applebee's. And I'm like, oh shit. All right, I guess that's where we're going today. Holy we crap, don't, really? We don't even yeah, have an Applebee's anymore. So. Yeah, who has an Applebee's? Yeah. Hey, I... There's there's at least two. There's one like an hour away from me. There's any major metropolitan city, at least in California. I don't know. I've seen them in Sacramento. I've seen them in my wife's hometown. Well, here's a phenomenon, David. If you eat at Applebee's, you can actually get tickets to see movies. Did you know this? What? It's still not worth it. <laughs> Crack open a cold box of wine or pour something cold on ice because it's the Binge Watchers Podcast. Everybody uh, listening or watching at home, the Applebee's dude, his name actually isn't TJ Applebee. It's like TJ Palmer. There's like two brothers. If anybody loves uh, hamburger neighborhood restaurant trivia, Dave said it's the <laughs> boomer's paradise. I see. I thought you made up that name because I thought you were like making a combination of TGI Fridays okay. and Applebee's. Here's the funny thing. I was doing the joke about if I received if like we received a, a cease and desist letter from TJ Appleby, and then I discovered one of the brothers' names really was TJ, and I was like, "Oh, it's the mental game," but it lined up. Uh, joined as always by Jordan Savage and Dangerous Dave. It's the Binge Watchers podcast with Johnny Spoiler and these guys. It's not about Happy Bees. It's not like <laughs> this isn't like the history of restaurants or like America's favorite neighborhood hangout. Applebee's. Um, we're here to discuss home video headlines. Uh, Charlie Day has directed a movie. I don't even know this dude could direct. He has a movie coming out, Fool's Paradise. You might know him as Charlie on All of Sunny in Philadelphia. The description kind of reminds me of like a Prince and the Popper scenario because there's a famous actor who refuses to like leave his trailer and work on the movie. And then a talent agent finds like a uh, a pseudo crazy person or or whatever degenerate or whatever and like plugs him in as the actor 
Well, it kind of reminds me of the couch trip plot with Dan Aykroyd and um, mm. the odd couple, David. Who are the actors? Uh, Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. Yeah, Walter Matthau. He's in the uh, he's in the couch trip with Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> anyway, Charlie Day has a movie coming out called Fool's Paradise. It sounds like you're like a comedy duo foil movie, like eighties, nineties, like classic comedy duo stuff. Like a Tommy Boy, or is it like road trip comedy, or I don't know. <laughs> no, more like. I guess you have to go watch the couch. Just like a hangout buddy comedy, I guess. Yeah, like a comedy, like and then like you know, like um. Well, the Prince of the Popper is just that, like somebody switches places with somebody else, and then mayhem ensues. So it's gonna be like one of those, like Parent Trap or something. Like, so like that, it's just like yeah, role then... revert, like role reversal, right? So right. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'll be down. Yeah. Hey, okay. Jordan, did you ever hear of this weird cartoon called Biker Maris from Mars? Mm-mm. Holy crap. So there's like three. Are they brothers, David? Do you remember what the Mice I, brothers? I, I know of the cartoon. I never watched it. <laughs> oh, they seem like brothers because they're really tight. Basically, it's like three beefed up mice that ride around on Harley Davidson's that can fly throughout their space. I don't know. They come down to Earth. They're fighting other aliens. Sounds sick. I got to watch this. Yeah. It was like, well, have you heard of like Street Sharks? No. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. You got to at least watch the theme song. Skeleton Warriors. <laughs> have you heard about any of these weird cartoons? Okay. So, anyway. Heard about Beetleborgs or uh, what other stupid cartoons? You're like five. I think you're. I think based on the timeline, I think Jordan, you're like five when all these shows are coming out. Um, anyway, they're gonna remake it. It's like, come, what? What, what about Bucky O'Hare? Oh, He's like a a green rabbit that flies around in space and has there's a, like there's like a duck who looks like Daffy Duck. Hmm. It's like his partner, but has like four arms. No, I Dead feel like duck. I'm missing out on all these cartoons that sound yeah. really and they, cool. They fight oh, evil Fantastic alien Max, frogs. The, the baby space guy. <laughs> Which guy? You don't remember um, Fantastic Max? This was like a baby that... You mean Mighty Max, space. who the owl is no, like... No, that, his... that, was, that was a different cartoon. This was Fantastic Max, where he had a spaceship that was looked like a baby bottle. He had like a robot butler that like went on his ventures with him i swear to god this is a real cartoon in the 80s or 90s prove it david <laughs> find some proof well, i mean you know if you want to link me to youtube i'll show you <laughs> his catchphrase oh, was like dirty diapers i swear to god this is a real cartoon <laughs> well on a darker tone alec baldwin's probably not going to get remembered for 40 years of making movies and tv or his eight eight kids that he has he's probably going to always be remembered for the rust accident where he accidentally shot somebody and uh, because they're gonna try to bring him up on involuntary manslaughter, that's the deal now. Now, now that all the investigations are done, that's what's gonna happen or something. Uh, which is really not, funny not. because like the first thing he did was went to Italy, which is what Kevin Spacey did. It's like everybody, like American actors, they get in trouble here. They just like get awards at the Italian film market or something. <laughs> it's so strange. Like I'm trusting. Like, like it's like it's like oh man, I, Italy's got a wild film market. That's my understanding. If I get in trouble here, I'm gonna just we're just gonna go make movies in Italy. Sounds like not or the, bad. Or, the, or Applebee know. shuts down the podcast. We're just going to Italy. We'll just make <laughs> Italian movie watchers podcast. Um. Oh, and then there's a horror movie actor who's in like in Warlock, Warlock Two, oh, yeah. Arachnophobia. His name is Julian Sands. He's like a English actor. Um, he disappeared somewhere in the California mountains like two weeks ago. No. And they got like a couple pings from his cell phone, but they don't know where the dude is. And so likely he's had a horrible, horrific accident. Like, oh. So anyway. Well, they were saying it was snowing pretty bad on the peak or wherever he may have been lost. Like, so it's signs are not good, uh, which sucks. But well, winter's great a, he's a great right actor. Now, so. I mean, that's kind of the the bummer. He's he, other than Warlock. He's never been like the big star of movies. So. Well, but apparently in his off time, he's like a semi-professional mountain climber. So he it's not just like he's like, let me just take a hike on a really dangerous mountain. Right. Apparently he has like all the gear, equipment, all the stuff, you know. Which means it's uh, extra dangerous, which is so sad. Yeah, like a, a professional <laughs> it has an accident, right? Like he has like 25 years of like mountain climbing experience or something yeah. ridiculous like that. Yeah. Some extreme stuff, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, see, I just worried you pulling a muscle at the gym, Jordan. That's it. <laughs> Pull the Hemi and you're done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, just if you can't see that, that stair she's just, climbing. She's wearing my long sleeve, but I'm, yeah. stra I'm strapped right now. So finally getting a good recovery from being <laughs> a Nikki, but we out here. Oh, man. 
Hey, hey, hey! This podcast is currently fueled by W Energy. You got 10% off with our code SPOILER. No sugar, no crash. 150 milligrams of caffeine per serving. Go to our link, Spoil W. Get 10% off with code SPOILER. Right now we're rocking this flavor called Dragonade. All right, that's it for now. More on this later. Back to the podcast in progress. Be feeling some gym time with that dubby. So, yeah. Yeah, the dubby's not too bad. I thought it was going to be really hard because I don't like powders, but I've been shaking this thing up all night. Can you hear that, folks? That's dubby. That's Mm. dubby in my little shaker. And it's called Dragonade. How could you go wrong? Dragonade. Yeah. I made the mistake of recording the commercial while actually really drinking dubby. It's the same reason actors don't drink alcohol on the set while they're shooting scenes is because I'm pretty jacked on caffeine right now. And your mouth is going a million miles an hour. Yeah, so. I'm pretty wired. Are my thoughts reaching the microphone <laughs> unknown? <laughs> uh, tonight's movie is called A Wind Named Amnesia. Um, the description online, it says, It happened quite suddenly with no warning. All the memories of the people on Earth swept away by a sudden wind. Now in a post-catastrophic Earth populated mostly by savages, without the memories of their past civilization, one man named Wateroo... He has an exciting name. He's on a journey of enlightenment and hope across a devastated America. Another way to say what this movie is about is dude fights a robot, Lock. has sex with an alien. Yes. <laughs> like, no other plot description necessary. Wind I would actually maybe have clicked and rented the movie faster if it was just like wind named amnesia anime. Dude fights a robot, gets rewarded by sex with an alien. Click, the rental sold. Uh, Dave, you got some dangerous details about tonight's movie? Uh, the, you know, Hold yeah, on. Let, let Jordan give you a warning first. <laughs> they better be dangerous. That's right. Oh, Damn right. right. <laughs> they might cut you in your sleep. I don't know. Um, not really. Uh, so this was based off of a novel of the same name by uh, a lot of Japanese names here. So I'm going to try my best. Uh, Asha, Ashahi Sonorama. Um, that was horrible. <laughs> Know, sure. <laughs> Better than what I could do, so A+. Plus. Um, the anime was written by, once again, uh, Yoshiaki Kawajiri and Hideyuki Kikuchi. Why didn't you just say it was a novel? Novel what? and comic book, and then a movie. I looked at I only saw that it was a novel. I, I actually typed in specifically, was this a manga and no, or a comic? And Dark Horse has it. I don't know if they, maybe they just hold, maybe it's on the shelf. Maybe they haven't adapted it, but, uh, they're, but it's for, linked somehow to Dark Horse. The sources I saw said novel, so I don't know. Maybe somebody can school me on that. Um, but the guys who wrote the anime are uh, people who had created Vampire Hunter D, Wicked City, and Ninja Scroll. So I can see why John assigned this, since we've covered every single one of those movies. Dude, I had no idea of the lovely connection to our other favorite animes. If you can't tell, David's our anime expert. He loves it so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um so, uh, <laughs> while not a hit, while not a hit upon release, it has gone on to become kind of a cult hit. Um, mm. Raphael C of them Anime Reviews called it a sleeper hit and one of the best titles I've ever seen hurt or heard of, or one of the underseen titles. Um, and I had to inv- so a blogger named Bamboo Dong wrote in her review. What a great name for a blog! <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's why I had to include this fact because I yes. cannot let the knowledge of somebody named naming their blog Bamboo Dong not be out in the world. Um, I can't wait to get that email next week. Hey guys, <laughs> thanks for mentioning my blog Bamboo <laughs> Dong on your podcast. No problem, brother. Love your blog. David loves it. <laughs> Subscribe. Uh, but yes, so just so I can say it one more time, Bamboo Dong wrote in their review, without mm. a doubt, a name name... A, Wind Named Amnesia is one of the most unique and creative post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic tales ever woven. God, I cannot talk to save my life tonight. <laughs> and that's one thing that's like the only requirement of a podcast is talk. I know. <laughs> you don't get tongue-tied. And what do I do every week? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, those, those are the most dangerous facts I could find about this. Like, it's so dangerous, it doesn't want anything to be known about it. It just wants the movie to speak for itself. It did. It did. Whoa. So. <laughs> All right, before we go to our favorite bits from a wind called amnesia, we'll go to these messages and see if the audience can remember anything we have to say. We'll be right back. W is an energy drink loaded with vitamins and nootropics. They formulated W for anyone that wants to focus without the jitters that crash. You just mix one scoop with about eight ounces of cold water and shake it up, baby. Unlike other energy drinks, they actually pride themselves on having developed the clean energy formula 
free from fillers, maltodextrin, and artificial colors. They spend a lot of time formulating the recipe, and they only include vitamins and nootropics that are going to benefit your cognitive performance. The star of the show is their Neurofactor, a natural and patented ingredient that comes from high-quality ripe coffee cherries. It's actually been shown in clinical studies to boost brain performance. In addition, Dubby is sugar-free, zero calories, maltodextrin-free, and again, zero artificial colors. The serving of Dubby contains 150 milligrams of caffeine. That's approximately two cups of coffee. That's because they formulated it. You might notice that you're not getting anxious or wired because they formulated it with zero sugar and the neuro factor, and it's going to deliver energy and focus without the zero with zero jitters. Yes, Dubby can also be enjoyed around all corners of the world. So go ahead and use our Dubby Energy Partnership code 10% off with the code SPOILER. You get 10% off your Dubby Energy order. Crack open a cold box of... A group of friends on a weekend camp trip begin to suspect something supernatural is at play when the kids behave strangely after disappearing in the woods overnight. There's something wrong with the children is the latest horror movie from Bloomhouse Productions. Blumhouse. Sorry. Our boys at Blumhouse Productions. Available to buy or rent on digital. This film was not rated. You know what? If this movie sounds good to you too, you can like, comment, and sub. You can review us in the old-fashioned podcast app that's your favorite, iTunes, Podchaser, whatever. And, uh, you know, we'll hit you up with a chance to win this movie. We got uh, five to give away. Five, five, five to give away. You want to get a copy of The Wrong Children from Blumhouse Productions? It's out on digital now. Go ahead and play the game for the giveaway. And maybe you'll get a chance to win this spooky, spooky, scary movie that's brand new, just released. All right, now back to the show. It must be time for the favorite bits from a win called Amnesia. Yes, the bits. Um, I was uh, caught off guard a couple times watching this anime, and I realized I can understand why people like it so much. But I would say the best bit was the story of little John and what was his female companion's name? It was it Sue? Yeah. Yeah. Like and um so, i can't remember oh he has amnesia <laughs> <laughs> the wind got the to wind me. got to john yeah. um so this dummy's getting me it says no it says no what does it I, say i've I already have, forgotten <laughs> <laughs> i have to stop the caffeine by like 1 p.m or else i'd be up forever oh i'm just like boosted it says like you're not gonna get on like uh what does it say wired I don't know. What's a positive I, word for wired? Because I will be I'm the test up. of that. So yeah. jacked. Yeah. Juiced. Well, yeah. jacked. Get jacked on dubby. <laughs> no back uh, to the favorite bits that I interrupted because I'm so dubbed out. <laughs> that's that that's what you gotta call it, is you're all dubbed out. It's the new So bad I think about that during the commercial. I'll remember for next time. I'll do a dubbed out. I'm gonna write this down. Do dubbed out version next time. There you go. So <laughs> What I liked about their story is, right, like, so Wataru approaches them and the girl is being chased and he kind of fights off the rest of the mob um, because little John is, like, protecting her. And they find out that Sue is going to be the next bride to this god that um, is kind of controlling their community. And so They she worship needs... machines as a giant construction robot. Well, and they fight so many robots. But that one was yeah. technically ran by a man. And so that was well, yeah, because it was just cool like you know, like bit. those those big scrapey things they have in construction sites where they just or like things. a like a cherry picker. He's almost like yeah. in the inside of a cherry picker, but it's just a really um, good story of like I love how uh, what's the alien's name? What's her name? I didn't write her name down either. I'll have to look. So, it alien up. lady. Alien lady. <laughs> but alien you think she's a robot? Actually, I thought she was an android until the reveal. Until the very end. Yeah. yeah. But I. Spoiler love alert! We already wrecked it for you. She's a <laughs> freaking alien. 
she, I love how she says, like, what are you going to do to Wataru? Like, are you going to make these people mm. believe in what you believe on? Like, in, like, even if you have to use force, like, who are we to do that? I just thought that was a really good message. There's, like, all these little great little nuggets throughout the whole movie. But, you know, Sue lives her last day. And, like, the way that she wants it. So live every day like it's your last being super cheesy here um so yeah i thought it was just a really really good bit but there's a lot of things that i liked about it what about you dave um so i will say i I like the setup of the movie um the the main idea uh which is you know wind i mean it's in a weird way it sounds like it's a a m night Shyamalan movie like this sounds like the cousin to the happening like oh a wind wiped everybody's memories instead of causing them to commit suicide um, so, you know, uh, Watura, what is it? Wateru? Wateru. Wateru, Wateru. Thank you. Uh, Wateru, um, kind of explaining the setup, like, you know, like all the wind came through and like, you know, people forgot to drive tanker truck goes into a gas station. Um, just, just the whole setup, the montage of that was, I love the setup of the movie. Yeah. The story of the wind. The wind that took our memory or their memory. I don't know. What about you, John? What are your favorite bits? Oh, this is easy. I think I kind of, well, I mentioned it earlier. So the at one point, the, <laughs> yeah, the, alien, the alien goes, you learn some things. Now let's learn something together. And I wanted to pause it. I wanted to text David and be like, you know what's about to happen right now, David? Are you watching this thing? <laughs> as soon as somebody says a line like that, you know they're about to get it on. Like it's a it's a tried and true story format since the beginning of time. Hey, we've learned some things. Now let's go learn something together. We know what they're gonna do together. It's gonna happen, folks. So yeah, so it becomes like the Skinamax of anime aliens. Which is kind of funny, like Dave <sighs> Dave, even though he loves anime, he likes to harp on their uh, you know, familiar <laughs> tropes and uh, cliches, like, oh, I'm sure there's gonna be some nudity. Uh, it got a little softcore. Right. I'll admit it. Um, Twice, yeah, yeah, because you know they'll just be running, and all of a sudden their clothes are gone. Okay, all right. I guess it fell off during the struggle. I don't know. You know, like, try to justify what these horny Japanese uh, I, I artists will, are doing. I will say the first the first instance of nudity was pure gratuitous mm-hmm. because she's just running around on the beach like, hey, I'm right, it's like no reason. Yeah. She forgot oh, about her just... modesty, David. Okay, she's like, this is how we used to do it. Okay. We're all cave people again. Um, primal. Primal shit, yeah, instinct. <laughs> like, well, you were talking about Little John being a good a character you liked was because, like, he somehow had, like, sense memory of being a sheriff or something, right? And his I, former life. Yeah, I think that was, something. like, his daughter or something from the photo. Or yeah, maybe. at least some sort of... The weird, like, but then the weird role. scenario was when they're in a city that's in a bubble and it has technology and it's protected from the robots or whatever. That was like, a weird one. It's a... You at the end of that sequence, you find out it's a dad and a daughter. Right. But then, during some of the scenarios where they, it's like the city is like experimenting with the people inside the city. So they have them in different scenarios, like oh, doctor and nurse. But at one point, they have like a meet cute in the park. It's like a a man who encounters a woman in the park, and it looks like they're gonna go on a blind date. But then at the end of that sequence, you're like, he's like, hey, Papa, and you're like, wait a minute, the hell's going on? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it gets a little anime weird, but that's what anime does. It likes to. Unusually, this movie is kind of dramatic for an anime, which really surprised me. Like, it's like a drama. I mean, it has action sequences, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's like a drama. Um, I was hoping the girl was going to be an android because of the whole destroyer Terminator style robot that was chasing the guy, water route through the whole movie. I thought she was going to be linked to it. I thought the connection was going to be like, in order to get rid of the destroyer, he's also going to have to get rid of like the. The data collector. Because, like, the reason I thought she was an android is because that's what she was doing. She was just, like, collecting information about the human experience, right? So then I thought that was going to be the catch. In Act 3, we're going to be like, oh, yeah, in order to stop this killer robot, you also have to get rid of the good robot because they're controlled by the same system or whatever. And so to bring the system down, the mainframe, you're going to have to, like, kill your friend and kill the bad guy. It's a horrible choice. But they didn't go that way. Just all of a sudden, after they made love... It was that sweet, sweet love, David. <laughs> She's like, I'm an alien. <laughs> like it, it was a floating city, uh, upside down floating alien city in a bubble. And then they just fly away. And I'm like, why did they collect 
<laughs> the human experience if they were just going to abandon all the humans. So, like, I really don't get it. Like, did they come to Earth to see if we were worthy of being in the alien ship? Too many questions. Too many questions. <laughs> Let's move on to ratings. Let's figure out how Jordan rates this movie and how David rates it. Let's I liked it. I, I don't know. I feel like I've, I've really only watched two animes with the show, and I've liked them both. Mm. It's just always a fun experience. So if you're looking for a change up and something that definitely caught me off guard a couple times, give it a give it a shot. Go watch it. So it's a binge now for me. Oh, binge now. Yeah. Dave. Um, true to form, I mean I, I went in with an open mind. <laughs> I don't actually go into animes just ready to hate, but I still just did not like this at the end of the day. That I don't mind sex <laughs> scenes, but there's something about cartoon sex and the like I can't, I can't get into it, dude. It just does nothing for me. Just seeing I call like, bullshit on that, animated David. girls bouncing around. Going, hey, 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 hey. I call bullshit on that, Mister Dante. And do you know why? I mean, it also sparks <sighs> memories of the people I sold this stuff to. Like, I can't tell you how many. Look at my school guy right here, Jordan. So many I don't want, I don't want to let Jordan know that I've seen those naughty cartoons. You know what? But the, I bet that is so true. Dave is like getting the PTSD of like renting this or selling this to a very niche group if you will so. i mean i mean it's not really oh that yeah niche that's anymore, right though. dave that's used to work dave's video store used to hawk a lot of anime uh, we were like the go-to central for anime for a lot of kids a lot of people before like bigger stores opened up but uh like i don't know maybe i probably sold a dozen copies of this i don't know i mean i know i sold definitely a lot of ninja scroll which was something else we covered <laughs> Yeah, it's it's look, I guess you know what if you like anime, it's probably a binge now. I'm sure this is one of the better. Dave, I really thought this had a chance to win you your heart over, but I, I didn't I mean again, it, I, and it's also like I, I know there's like different styles of animation. There's like really fluid, beautiful, like Miyazaki stuff, then there's like the drop frames, cheap at looking animation, and this is somewhere in between. Like there's a mix of like some beautiful animation and then like really grungy, lazy looking like Every other frame is maybe animated or something. Uh, I I don't know. It's a style. I, it's not for me. But so I guess if you like anime, binge now. But if you're a cat, just don't. Then it's binge never. This was this a good not gateway. It was a good gateway anime for me. I feel like I could dabble a little bit after watching this. Like so. I'm sure I'm sure John's gonna choose one that I'm gonna absolutely love. I, like I think I like Princess Mononoke if I remember right, which was a Miyazaki. But I know John's gonna find that one one day. <laughs> Don't know I, dude, I thought this was gonna crack your shell wide open. This one, because it's but, not like typical. Like, usually I come out with like a balls out anime with like tons of nudity, lots of things blown up, a <laughs> bunch of monsters that don't make sense but also have feelings, and like weird shit that we have to contemplate. Like, is that appropriate or not? This is like has some drama. It's got a little heartfelt story, you know. Like, it's kind of soft. I thought I think this was that was gonna the be other the one. problem with it, though, is like it, I don't have a problem mixing genres, but it didn't know what it wanted to be, and it didn't hit any tone just right. Like you can have a dramatic mm. comedy or comedic drama, but like this, it, well, it wanted to be action. It wanted to be sci-fi. Well, I wanted to. You already be, mentioned uh, Ninja uh, Scroll, but I think we we I think we reviewed Ninja Scroll before Jordan was on the team. But uh, Lupin the Third we watched with Jordan, and that didn't mm. even win you over, David. Like so, if if, if like. The zany I mean, that comedy that's that like, bad, like, like a movie that's like a a freaking Scooby Doo adventure like Lupin the Third that didn't win you over. And I then think, like, I think um, I gave it at least a binge later. I don't think I was totally harsh on Lupin, but I don't remember. <laughs> Man, anyway, this movie's a binge now for me. Like, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I'd never seen this anime before. It's something I should have seen. I wrote down. I can't believe I haven't watched this yet. It's definitely in line with like a bunch of eighties anime, nineties style anime, that kind of thing. Um. But yeah, to summarize it, dude fights a robot and then makes love to an alien. Like, you know, Saturday afternoon entertainment, folks. And it's widely available. It's on like Tubi. Mm -hmm. It's on YouTube. It's on the uh, anime app that I like called Retro Crush. Um, Freebie. Yeah. I think. And then our buddy Rick, I forgot to write it down, but he gave us a nice review. Um, what did he say? Sometimes we like to do fan service, folks. When the fans chime in, we let you know. And uh, for chiming in, you can win a movie like that thing with the children who've gone wrong or whatever. It's really funny. Love Dave, you love it when kids go title. crazy in horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the exact title. That thing with the children that go wrong. <laughs> when the children go wrong. 
How am I going to find this thing? Oh, I'm going to go into an app I hate, and I'll find it. I think I rag on iTunes all the time. Never going to be in the top ten anymore. <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So, we got a five-star recently. One of the funniest, highly original movie-slash-comedy podcasts I've ever found. They dive deep into all genres and time periods to share their take on a super wide variety of movies. This show gets a binge now review from me. Highly recommended. So he even used our special movie rating system of binge now, binge later, binge never. Which Dave just told me that he loves the anime movie that we watch and like it's like his favorite anime of all time. <laughs> Selective yeah, hearing. I should probably challenge myself to like watch more anime this year and actually see if I actually come out liking anything. I mean, I, I have seen anime I've enjoyed, just not generally for me. Mm. Maybe I wow. should go find like the top ten movie, top ten animes, and start there. I like that you're a critic, well, Dave. So <laughs> David loves anime so much. Sometimes he watches other things just to take a break because he watches too much too much anime. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. See, so, so I'm hearing totally different things that you're saying tonight, dude. <laughs> it's um, the dubby. <laughs> yeah, it's the dubby. Dub <laughs> dub. Did it give you like squirrel energy? Like you could just your so disclaimer overconfidence. <laughs> it will give you incredible feats of confidence. You can leap tall buildings. Okay, um, let's see. If you watch something else besides the movie of the week, and you want the audience to know about it, what can you recommend, Jordan? I did. I watched the cutest, most mm. heartwarming, has a little bit of Did you watch Puss in Boots Last Wish? No. Oh. <laughs> I was up. <laughs> I thought that was um, what you were going. <laughs> it's a documentary called The Pez Outlaw on <laughs> yeah. oh, man, It's in my queue. It it's in my queue so right now. It was so good. I like had to hug the TV. Mm. It's so good, isn't it? It's so good. That's it actually was... what I was going to bring up, so I got to pivot. But it was on. like a love story. Wait, the only happy-go-lucky mystery. documentary that I've seen is uh, King of Pong, which is about like winning Donkey Kong on the arcade. The, uh, it's it's kind of in that line where it's like a lovable loser, or not a loser, but like just a guy you want to root for. A disheveled looking man. And I kind of like how it was filmed. It kind of give gave me like almost drunk history vibes where he would be hmm. like telling his story, but then they'd have like very good, um, like accurate looking actors and fun scenes and stuff. And it was just so good. I'm telling everybody about it. So wow. binge now. Yeah, definitely a binge now for me. Um, I love any. So he collects about- like super expensive Pez? Well, okay, so that's like the thing. Smuggles. So fun. he smuggles. Smuggle yeah. So he 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 becomes a collector. Like the he, starts off with, uh, he starts off collecting cereal boxes, like just rare box variants tops. of cereal. Like he actually showed John. You would appreciate this. He showed a box of Bill and Ted cereal that he has. Wow. Um, so he gets into the collector world and he finds out like Pez dispensers are a big thing and like starts hunting around and somebody whispers like, "You got to go to this place in Russia. That's where the good stuff is that doesn't get released over here." So on a whim, he just went over to Russia with his son, like hunted around, found the factory and like made friends with the Russian people who run the Pez dispensary there and like would come back with thousands of Pez and sell them on the black. He's or like still in your wreck market. right now, Jordan. I He's still in your wreck. No, I'm trying like, to add to it. I'm not yeah. taking away from her. I, I, I'm with you. This was a great movie. So good. It was so good. Um, but I guess I'll give my own. Uh, recommendation too that was not the Pez Outlaw. Um, actually, a rewatch for me. Um, John, I bet seen this, but uh, and Jordan, I would suggest. I don't know if it's fair to say it'd be a shameful one because I don't know how well known it is today. They're uh, all but shameful. the movie, <laughs> <laughs> but um, with Nicole Kidman, the movie To Die For, I did a rewatch mm-hmm. of that uh, this last week. Um, a lot of movies today. Oh, what is that where she she manipulates the teenagers into killing her husband? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot yeah. like. Like this movie has a lot to do with like things like I Tanya. Actually, a lot of the style from I Tanya, I feel like was taken from this, where mm-hmm. it's like it's a it's a fictional movie, but it it's filmed like a documentary. So they'll have like fake interviews. Like this is even before The Office and things like that. Um, but like uh, Nicole Kidman wants to be a a news reporter or like you know a journalist, a photojournalist, and uh, like just basically does anything she can to become popular and cause mm-hmm. these kids into killing her husband to become a new story. And like I said, it's just a lot of things like I, Tanya or see or that, that came out when like the, the hype was like extra TV or like hard copy, you know, when yeah. like 
when news was like sensationalized hmm. in the nineties, like uh, it was like like tabloid Burn news. Affair, yeah, ta- yeah, like I guess it's TMZ today. Like that's the biggest one I can think of. But... Oh yeah, that's what it is. There used to be like ten different TMZs on TV. Yeah, but now there's like just the internet and TMZ. Yeah, but yeah, I I, I hadn't watched it in years. But to die for with Nicole Kidman is worth a revisit. Actually, it held up a lot better than I remembered. And you can't go wrong with Nicole Kidman. I not love really. Her. Yeah. Uh, what about you, John? Um, I got sucked into a recommendation to watch Your Honor, which is a drama with Brian Cranston where he plays a judge, and like one problem snowballs after the other, and he's like trying to cover something up, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And uh, he gets like him and his son get involved with like a crime family, and they're on opposite sides of this accident, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And then like so, he's like having to manipulate the courtroom system, you know. Um, so if, you know, if you like Brian Cranston and crime stuff because you watched Better Call Saul or freaking Breaking what's Bad. the other one? What is it? Breaking Bad, yeah, Breaking Bad, then this will be up your alley. But it mostly, in terms of tone and style, reminds me of this anthology drama called American Crime. Did you ever see oh, that? Yeah. So, like, each uh, yeah. season was different, but played by the same actors, but different characters. But just how, like, hmm. um, they show you how like the crime evolves over time and like who's involved. Who's investigating? Like, uh, and then like, eh, it's kind of poorly written though. The Your Honor, like, it's not as good as it should be, but it's like uh, one of the only things I've been watching. So, it's clearly good enough for me to want to watch. I stayed up like to watch the whole first season. Is it like one of those things where Brian Cranston is the one who elevates it? Like some shows, like the performance uh, is what elevates uh, everything else. Is eh. Actually, the show has like one or two a- new actors that haven't got a lot of street credit, but are doing pretty good. Hmm. And uh, I wish I knew the guy's name, but there's a character actor that's usually in comedies, but he's playing like a cricket cop friend who's trying to become the mayor. And like, he's interesting to watch. And then there's this young actor. She's like a supporting character in the mob family, but she's like the only one in the mob family disassociated. She's like the daughter of a new Orleans crime family, but she's like the only one. Well, there's two younger siblings actually that weren't involved in the family business, but they're the ones being victimized. Right. So it's, it's like, it's kind of intense. So she actually does a really great job. Um, yeah. Anyway, what else did I watch? Oh, then I watched this movie where Mickey work was beating up Superman. By that, I mean to say, Mickey Work is in a medieval movie called The Immortals, and Henry Cavill plays Theseus. The The movie's trash. It looks like the 300. Like they shot the movie in front of a green screen, and they're just like, it's basically like a studio saw how well 300 did, and they're like, oh, God, we better rush out and make another 300 really quickly. And that's what they did. It's like they got together on a Thursday and they were done by Sunday. You know, you know what I mean? Plus it like, took like five years after. Th- it was all that was, it was also bad timing. It was like came out when it was relevant again. And it has some good actors in it doing like the worst, the worst stuff that they've ever done. Oh, yeah. I, so. I saw that in the theaters in 3D and I've forgotten. Just like the wind that caused amnesia. I forgot all about that movie. <laughs> and and Mickey Rourke is like hit or miss. So he's a dramatic actor from the 80s and 90s. He got into a lot of uh, mid-level boxing fights, so he has permanent brain damage, and he's had some bouts with bad plastic surgery, and he's kind of fallen... Let's just say he's fallen from graces several times and then always come back from it. So, I mean, should he be playing an ancient Greece general? Uh, Probably not, (laughs) but but he's he's the best thing in this bad movie. (laughs) You know what I mean? Well, he had a... a, You know... Gerard Butler's Scottish playing uh, Roman emperor or uh, Roman soldier. So. Spartan. Yeah. Why not? I don't know. I kept. I it's a weak case. Movie. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with it. Uh, it's like barely a movie. <laughs> I think the only thing that, if I remember, the only thing about that movie was the visuals, and that didn't even carry it that much. I like guess from no, a director it's very artificial. Good... You can see a lot of artificial stuff in the movie, and you're just like, man. Which is too bad because the guy who directed it is, is a great director in terms of visual style, not necessarily storytelling, but yeah. Was... Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> I have no I have no 
I don't want to see the guy's next movie or or first movie or anything. Oh, um, I'm sure you loved his first movie. It was a sell. You don't remember that? Well, now I have to swallow my pride. <laughs> no, he he actually's done a few good movies, but that ain't one of them. The cell's good. You know, some might consider the cell to be anime, David. I I would I would buy that argument. I watched it fairly recently. That's again. right. That's right. Truth comes out at the end of the episode. David loves anime. Anything for. Jordan probably had a great follow up, but I just wanted to <clears throat> leave it and go to the outro before David could defend himself when I said he loves the anime. I was going to say anything for you to force David's hand and saying that he likes anime. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like a documentarian. I force the opinions, right? You know documentarians, David? Yeah. You got to believe it because it's through their lens, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything else is left on the cutting room floor. So I think if if there's any takeaways from this episode, the audience is going to be 100% convinced that you love anime. I'm sure some people will believe that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 